With aim training on the rise, more and more people are starting their own aim journeys. While this is exciting, it also brings lots of confusion and unease about how to get started. This video aims to tackle this problem by laying out a clear foundation for you to build up from. The topics I will be covering should appear on screen now, and I'm going to try and keep things as simple and straightforward as possible so that you can feel confident starting your journey. Alright, let's get into it. Real quick, in this video's description, I've left a link so that you can identify your in-game sensitivity in terms of centimeters per 360. We use this measurement as it's universal across all games. So in my case, I have to move my mouse 27 centimeters to be able to do one 360. I think it's important that we clear some things up about mouse sensitivity. So to start with, sensitivity is ultimately a preference. There is no God sensitivity there are objectively better sensitivity ranges for certain aiming types and finally your skill is not limited by your sensitivity and this is barring extreme sensitivities so when i say there are better sensitivity ranges than others i say this because the aiming aspect in each game are different that can be seen with the reactive range and precision clicking range on the average sensitivity chart a very reactive game like Quake, Apex, and some of the heroes on Overwatch may be better suited to a higher or faster sensitivity due to their reactive aiming styles, whilst Counter-Strike and Valorant require extreme precision, and so a slower sensitivity can provide more benefits. This isn't to say that you shouldn't go against this. There are many pro players who do not follow the beneficial sensitivity ranges. Hiko is a great example of this. He plays at 22 centimeters and has incredible aim on Valorant and CSGO. If you've put in the time on a sensitivity, you can really get used to it regardless of how fast or slow it is. Okay, so to start, head to the description and look for the section titled Kovacs Playlist Archive. I've linked lots of playlists for you to choose from. If you're a brand new player, definitely check out the Voltaics Game Routine link. It offers lots of insightful information about the skills you're going to be training in relation to the game. Alternatively, there's also a massive playlist archive compiled by RID that you can use as well, which has some fundamental skill playlists and also some game specific ones that you can try out. I believe the Voltaic routines have share codes, which you can just copy into Kovacs and it transfers the data. But if it's a playlist file, the first link in the description will send you to a short YouTube video that will teach you how to import them. It's really simple, so there's no need to stress or anything. So now that you've got a playlist, make some mental notes of what scenarios you're finding too difficult or too easy. If the playlist doesn't suit your needs, feel free to browse and choose a better one. Remember, doing something too difficult or too easy will not help you advance on your aim journey. You need to find the playlist challenging, but not frustratingly so. Also, I'd recommend that you change your FOV settings depending on what scenario you're playing. The general rule is that static and tracking scenarios are played on Overwatch 103 FOV and target switching scenarios are played anywhere from 110 to 120 Overwatch FOV. If you'd like to use your exact in-game FOV, that's fine, however I believe most scenarios are designed and work best for the Overwatch FOV scale. I can't exactly remember why, I just think it's the standard. The downside of using specific game playlists over time is that there may be areas of your aim that are underdeveloped due to your game not requiring them as much. This is where the benchmark sheets come into play. The benchmarks have been made in such a way where you can see and record your progress which feels extremely rewarding as you climb up the ladder. Even if you're just trying to improve aim for a specific game, the benchmarks will make you more aware of your aiming strengths and weaknesses, thus upgrading your aim overall. And then, even further down the line, once your aiming weaknesses have been identified, I'd recommend checking out the link labelled Improving Specific Aim Aspect. From here, you can find a targeted playlist to work on those weaknesses. However, there are more than just these to choose from, so do have a look at the other options in the archive. In my opinion, you should now have the key resources to be able to start your aim journey with a positive trajectory. You have a playlist for your game of choice, the benchmark sheets to identify your aiming abilities, and a specific playlist to improve those strengths and weaknesses. If you're interested in aiming techniques, I've left videos in the description that cover these aspects. From this point onwards, I'll just be sharing some knowledge from my own experiences, so feel free to click off this video. To get better aim results for your game, you need to practice a bit differently from regular scenario grinding. For example, on Apex, the Peacekeeper can do a ton of damage if you land a good shot. 
However, you'll get punished severely if you miss, as the reload after each shot takes a second, which can make you lose a gunfight. So, if you'd like to improve with a specific weapon, like a shotgun, you should play a relevant scenario with that shotgun punishment aspect in mind. So in this case, I would take a bit more time to confirm that I'm on the target before shooting. Doing this kind of relevant practice will translate extremely well into in-game, as the next time you use a shotgun, you'll be making sure you're on target before pulling the trigger. This might give you a lower score on the scenario, however in-game you're able to land more consistent hits. Don't always correlate better scores with better in-game aim. In fact, you can often develop bad habits that translate to worse performance in-game through the use of aim trainers. Trainers? Trainers. A few of these habits could be spending more time learning aim than aspects of the game, which I'm fucking guilty of, spam firing, so not consciously clicking the targets, aim dueling, putting yourself in unfavorable situations due to believed aim ability or ego, just remember that aim training is only one aspect to improve you at the game of your choice. So, if you're a beginner, I would recommend training for around 30 minutes. Make sure that you're spending enough quality focused time on each scenario so that it downloads into your brain. Ideally, you would want to train more, but at the start it can feel extremely long and sometimes even boring. Once you've been consistently training, I'd recommend upping your time to 60 minutes. Remember that you don't have to do this all in one session. You can break it up into multiple sessions throughout the day, if that's more your style. If you want to train even longer, that's totally fine as well. Just remember to take some breaks and stretch regularly. While on your aiming journey, you're bound to get stuck and not see any new high scores for a while, or even just perform poorly in game. It's important not to freak out and start thinking that you're washed. Everybody experiences this from time to time. The good news is there's actually lots of things you can do to push past these hard times. Try switching things up by playing different playlists. You could use the free mode to edit scenarios, making things slightly more difficult or easier in some circumstances. You might want to try focus on proper aiming technique, links in the description. Taking a break from a skill or just focusing on a different skill in general. You could practice aim in game to freshen things up for a bit if you've been playing aim trainers for too long. And then obviously, play more difficult scenarios and sometimes even easier scenarios. That can actually really, really help. Lastly, I want to end this video off by letting you know that you really can get incredible aim. You're going to have to be patient and put in the time and effort, but you really will see improvements. I was just like you, starting out and going through the motions. So I'm being genuine when I say, no matter your current skill level, you should be proud of the progress you've made and you'll be even more shocked at how far you can get if you stick with it.